Welcome to the 54th annual meeting of the corporate members of the Golden Rain Foundation of Laguna Woods. This meeting is now called to order. I see Catherine is over there. Catherine Laster is our inspector of elections. So will the inspector of elections please confirm the quorum has been achieved for the purposes of conducting business at the meeting of the members. Quorum has been achieved. Thank you. Director Skillman, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? It's my privilege. <coughs> please face the flag and pledge with me to the flag of our country, States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you. Acknowledging the press. I don't see press back there yet. Approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I so move. Second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Is it everybody out there votes too? How, how does that go? I think all of you do too, you're corporate members, right? <laughs> We are now down to number five on the agenda, which is members' comments. In accordance with Civil Code Section 5000, any member is permitted to speak during meetings of the membership. The GRF board has established a three minute time limit. If you will please respect this time limit. Have we got anybody, Cheryl? I have not gotten any requests to speak. Huh. We have one coming up now. Okay. Okay, our first speaker is Cash Akrakar. Hi, Good morning, everybody. Uh, our community is trustees, three trustees, United, Third, and Fifth, and a trustor, GRF. Uh, GRF, I'm here to talk about about this USPS voting thing, GRF is supposed to be, uh, have first allegiance to the trustees because they are the trustors, take care of our interests, our needs, and they have to look after, after our interests first. The way the lease is written, there's a clause that says, and no matter who the lease is written to, but this is USPS, maybe some uh, leeway was made, and there's a clause that says that they can sublease to anybody whatsoever. Cash, Cash uh, you, you're speaking on something that's on the agenda. So, yes, it's number 12 on the agenda. Okay, I'll wait. Thank you. Thank you. Then we will move to approval of corporate members meeting minutes. And I've got four of them here. November 8th, 2018, annual meeting of the corporate members. January 30th. Pardon? November 8th meeting is the 2017. Oh, 2017. I said, did I say 18? You can do it if they want to do them all together. I asked Cheryl, she said to do them all together. Whatever, no? Does anyone have a concern with doing all these together? No. One person out there with a concern. What, come up, sir, and tell us your concern, maybe. Good morning. Uh, Manuel Armendaris, director with United. Uh, in the minutes for November 8, 2017, it shows that uh, Pat English and myself were absent from that meeting. I know I attended that meeting, and I voted. So that's a correction I believe should be made. And then, uh, I'm not sure about this, but uh, on the tabulation for the votes, I thought that the total 
for each mutual should equal the number of units. And if you look at the table behind those minutes, it shows totally different numbers in that. So I'm raising a question regarding that tabulation as reported in here being correct. So those are my two inputs. Is that page 6A? Uh, that would be page 6A. Yes, that's correct. If this is correct, I'd like to have somebody explain it to me as to how these numbers are wondering derived. Who, Thank you. Who would be the one to explain? Uh, Ms. Siobhan? Please just give us a minute and we'll get the answers yeah. while the meeting. Excuse me. Generally, uh, Betty is here, you know, is part of the tabulation. So I think that we, sh you should uh, reserve the opportunity to go back to that so you can verify it. But the other one is you can correct because it's minuscule. Thank you. <laughs> my mentor is over here to my left <laughs> and my right. <laughs> so we'll table this for now. We'll move on to the next one till we get some so, answers. So we're gonna, you're going to so, delay approval of November 8th. We're delaying approval of November 8th, correct. So now we're on to January 30th, 2018. Special meeting of the corporate members. I so move. Second. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes. Now down to April 9th, 2018, the special meeting of the corporate members. It's my turn. I move. Accept. I second. All those in favor? Any against? Okay, that motion passes. Now we're moving down to August 13th, 2018, special meeting of the corporate members. So All move. those in favor. Oh, wait, motion. I so move. Second. All uh, those in favor. It, excuse me, is that the one where he questioned the attendance? Which one did he? <coughs> um, it was November 8th. This is it was on both of those? He had corrections, two corrections on no, that one? No, I thought it was only on November 8th. He said that there was something wrong with the attendance. Okay, all right. I'm sorry, I yeah, just didn't two, want to. Yeah, two on the same. Thing. Okay, so yeah. we'll vote for that. Okay, so now we can vote on this one, August 13th. All those in favor? Thank you. Motion passes. So we will soon have an answer to um, the November 8th questions. So go down to the next item and we will return to it. Next item is Vice President's Remarks. Gavin. And my remarks are. <laughs> this is the third year of transition. Many changes have happened, many transitions, many accomplishments. We have a truly increased collaboration and cooperation among all of our boards. Our directors and management staff, as well as all staff members, have been this year very organized, efficient, effective, and creative in completing tasks as Laguna Woods Village moves into the 21st century. We welcomed happily our new COO, Siobhan Foster, and we bid goodbye to CEO Brad Hudson as he left us to take on new challenges. In addition, we welcome the Laguna Woods Village Marketing and Communication Director, Eileen Pollan. We will now have the pleasure of seeing a slide presentation created by Eileen and her team of some of the accomplishments of the Golden Rain Foundation in 2018. We are truly blessed to have our directors be, to be our narrators for this slideshow. And with whom are we starting? Yes, Director Sabosol, we're starting with you. Okay, on protecting our community. Compliance cases. All right, as you notice, there's an increase in 2016 and 17. We're improving the community through enforced compliance, which is due to increasing the number of security officers. We also use the program See Something, Say Something. Together, these programs are making Laguna Woods Village 
a more attractive and safer place to live. Protecting our community. Moving violations, speed of 16 plus miles per hour. Security is able to cite speeders, protecting our pedestrian residents, as well as our driving residents. We want everyone who walks in Laguna Woods Village to feel safe. Social services. We are a very diverse community stepping up to serving the needs of every resident. And as you can see, it's no cost to residents. There's, we have people that have a bilingual master of social work interns, licensed clinical social workers funded by Memorial Care Saddleback Medical Center, and grant application in progress for additional social worker and services coordinator. Technology, security in vehicle mobile computers. Security vehicles are now equipped with tablets, enabling officers to have quicker response times, allowing them to be more efficient and paperless. Security vehicles are color-coded blue, sporting these new wraps with our color, logo, website, and phone number. Disaster Preparedness. Disaster Preparedness Annual Great Shakeout was held on October the 18th at 1018 a.m. for the purpose of testing equipment and our emergency plan procedures. Some issues were identified and fixes will be made. An energy consultant is assessing ways to assure reliable energy 24-7 for our command center in a disaster. Sign installation. Moving to replaceable signage. If someone knocks over a stop sign, the base will allow a new sign to be installed rather seamlessly. Bollards. Bollards have been added to Clubhouse 2 to protect members, residents, guests, and staff using the front patio. <coughs> Excuse me. And keeping the Clubhouse itself safe from vehicular traffic. Clubhouse 7 parking lot lighting. Safety lighting, which is mercury free and energy efficient, has been installed in RV lots, Clubhouse 3, and Clubhouse 7. Clubhouse 5 was completed two years ago. This is an ongoing money-saving project, cutting 60 to 70% of annual electric costs and relatively maintenance-free. Thank you. Are we gonna do Diane next? Where? I'm going to do mine. Bert, Diane is next. Thank you. Sorry. I'm going to squeeze in because I was on. Oh. Sorry. Um, okay. Do we have them up? No. Okay. <clears throat> sorry. I, I have a cold. This uh, is Director Phelps. Thank you. Sorry. Diane Phelps, uh, Treasurer. So <clears throat> I'm just here to say a couple of words about our assessments. Uh, so we can see, if we look at this, that in uh, our assessments in 2019, you can see that uh, they've they are, they're uh, creeping up, but they are less than the uh, um, cost of living. And, <clears throat> excuse me, that we are about the same as we were, oh, say, 10 years ago. So that what you can see from that, uh, as we've increased the trust facilities fee, we've been able to lower the monthly assessment from GRF. And then the next page is the income tax history. And we lost, we, I think we had our 501c3 uh, <clears throat> uh, non-taxable status until 2011. We had it for about 14 years. And since then, we've been able, uh, with the help of the additional soft, uh, accounting software, <coughs> excuse me, software we have, we've been able to, uh, as you can see, dramatically reduce the income tax we paid. That's it. Right. Thank you. 
Okay, Bert, you're up. <laughs> Director Muldow. Okay. You got the charts up there? Okay. Um, one thing that we've done is uh, in the landscape area, we recognize the increasing cost of water, which will continue to rise. And so we've made a concerted effort to replace the plants that we have with water efficient planting. Okay. And you'll see the picture. The first one on the left is Clubhouse 7. Uh, our signage in this community is old, 40, 50 years old. Uh, it's wearing out. It it's, can be read. And uh, we are making a concerted effort now to replace the old signage with new signage, uh, bigger letters for, for seniors. And uh, we invite the residents of this village, when they see a sign, that really is no longer readable to notify us. And believe me, we'll get out there and replace it. With the garden centers, we had begun a process last year where we've had long waiting lists for people. Uh, and it's due to basically inefficient management assignment of plots. And through proper management, we've cleaned the list up. And we actually have plots available now. So if you want one. Come on down to the community center and make your request. And one nice thing that uh, we've done, we've recognized that we're an aging community. And what we've done is we put a gathering area with seating and shading uh, in Garden Center 1, where you can now rest, cool off while you're gardening, uh, enjoy a drink, socialize with your neighbors. Thank you, Director Moldo. I need to know. Director Matson. The MNC committee <clears throat> was very active um, this year, and um, we have a number of things here. The number one is gate arm technology, and uh, number number all of our gates are being improved and uh, some of them have this um, gate arm capability which is, enhances our security next one we have charging stations now for the folks that have uh, electric battery powered cars and um, this is uh, quite a, uh, a new thing here and and so um, with charging stations and number the areas where we have the manors also, so people can uh, hook up close to their home. Next one, lawn bowling. This is a, a, an inc incredible job here that was done. The lawn bowling area in gate 12 um, has been repaired over the years, uh, not about three times, and we finally got a, a company construction outfit from Australia, who are considered the uh, tops in the, in the um, world, I guess. And, and they came in here and they did an absolutely incredible job of demoing the old courts and, and uh, building this new, this new area. It's just uh, super impressive. And uh, it has one of the best locations in the entire village here with a view looking out to the north and the east. Just a, really a special place. And these folks, uh, they have over 100 members now. And they uh, have opened it to other cities and groups in other cities. And we have uh, uh, tournaments here. And it's uh, a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, addition to what we have here. Next one, shuffleboard courts is an area that's been um, um, vacant for probably 10, 12, 15 years. And it's a 90 foot by 90 foot uh, old court that uh, uh, people got tired of uh, playing shuffleboard, so it's been dormant. And so, next chart, we decided to, the board decided to turn us into uh, a passive park. And uh, this is the area after we. Uh, um, 
tore out everything. And the next chart shows the beautiful green grass. Uh, we put in a new irrigation system and uh, green grass, and this is called a passive park now, 90 feet by 90 feet. Um, right now, there's no plan to do anything else with that other than uh, we're going to put in some tables and uh, so people can uh, sit there and enjoy this, uh, this wonderful, wonderful view that we have from this spot. And um, um, it's possible that we have, we staff has a portable um, little recreation uh, cart that uh, has uh, food like hot dogs and drinks, and that may, we um, will probably be using that maybe on Saturday, something like that, when people go down there. The uh, pools that we have here occasionally uh, start failing after all these 50 years, and this, um, so what we do is drain the pool and perform repairs to the walls and the and the drainage system and up along the top and so forth, whatever is needed. This next chart shows you what it looks like when one is completed, which is just incredible, over gate uh, four. This is a really, really nice uh, spot and uh, very impressive, very impressive. I went over there shortly after it was finished and uh, couldn't believe how nice it looked and people really appreciate it. Next one, we're uh, starting to put some solar uh, cells up on top of the uh, uh, roofs of these uh, buildings. And uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, still at Clubhouse 4. And um, that's helping out a lot on our electric bill. And the next one is a, an area, our paddle tennis area for years has been on a court that was, that, uh, was not very uh, conducive to playing, playing pedal tennis. And then all of a sudden we got people that uh, know how to play pickleball in here. It's a new thing. And so that uh, added to this area here. And we board had to decide where to put a new uh, pickleball and paddle tennis court. And we ended up here at uh, gate 12 at uh, near Clubhouse 2, down the hill there from Clubhouse 2. As you you can see here, there are seven combination, seven courts here that will be used, and they, and they one of the courts have been designated for a gathering area, or there will be a, a little covered areas where they can have, um, a club can have the little drinks and meetings and so forth, whatever they'd like to do there. This is uh, at the point now where we're pouring concrete in there on, on re the rebar, a foundation, and um, that's been delayed a little bit due to some uh, things were not quite uh, finished. So, but that's uh, a major milestone for the concrete there. And so, that it probably be another month or two before that will be open for the folks that play pickleball and paddle tennis. And the village greens. That was a program, a new building. Uh, that was put in at, at that and uh, that was completed in 2011 and over the few uh, eight years uh, seven eight years we've had to uh, th some of the things are wearing out and um, chairs and and little tables and and um, flooring and and some other things uh, one of the things we're looking at and all the chairs and tables were replaced. What we're looking at right now in the um, the, uh, the the kitchen where the food is right now. You go in there and it takes about thirty minutes to get waited on. So we're looking at uh, the MNC committee is looking at something to uh, maybe um, get someone in there to look at the, maybe inside the kitchen that's not organized very well. So we could change things around a little bit so people can get better service. And if that failed, we can actually enlarge the kitchen. There is a design for that. And gatehouse, the last one, gatehouse, re gatehouse renovations. All the gatehouses are being upgraded with a 
technology is being added to them, and you saw one with the with the gates, and uh, all the buildings are um, being uh, upgraded, and and some of the ambassadors I've talked with really appreciate it. So that's something that's gone on real well. Thank you. Thank you, Director Batson. Okay, the next presentation will be by Beth Perek. Investing in our community. This is the little clubhouse for the small par three golf course and we had a redo there. And looking at it, doesn't it look like a nice place to just go and have a cup of coffee and visit with your friends? It's just a nice job there, thank you. And then this is the starter building for the same uh, par three golf course that was redone. <coughs> History Center desperately needed a new air, air conditioning and heating system. And here the folks are up on the roof putting that system in. Kiln, this was another thing that desperately needed being replaced were the kilns in um, Clubhouse 4 for the folks who do ceramics, and that project was completed. Wood shop, another thing in Clubhouse 4. Air conditioning in Clubhouse 4, it would get so hot in there that it was just terrific, and so we installed a new air conditioning system. Exit lanes, gate 1 and 5, make it easier to transition in and out of the village. Clubhouse one, the planters, obviously needed a redo. And there you can see the completed ones. Clubhouse one, furniture, so much more inviting, practical, comfortable furniture put in on the patio and by the pool. This is a meeting room in Clubhouse two, and we had big troubles with the acoustics in there because it was just all hard surfaces. And so we um, put in new carpeting in the two side rooms, the small meeting rooms, and that really does help with the acoustics. One of the things that's a, a new item and a hot item on the agenda for people who are into exercising, we opened a small self-serve fitness room in Clubhouse 5. And in there, we have bikes to practice cycling, and we do offer cycling classes there. And this is a fitness center here in the community center, which is all new. It was um, upstairs and moved downstairs. And it's really a, a beautiful, beautiful fitness center. Bridge room needed some updating in, in the kitchen as well as the serving area. And as you can see, that was completed and it's looking good. Transportation. Okay, our next presentation is by Ray Gross. Thank you, Director Gross. Good morning. This bus is brand new. It's a, which is a, actually energy efficient, has a new wrapper which tells what the place is from, the Goonawood Village, et cetera. Uh, it, it, it has the logo which is very, very attractive. Uh, this bus is smaller, it holds 13 passengers, it can get through the cul-de-sacs much easier. This is great for plan a ride. Our staff is listening to what the people have to say and they're doing the best they can to give us the most efficient way of doing things around here. Uh, it's a very costly situation, but the staff is really working on it. Be patient. We'll do the best we can. Thank you. Okay, next, our presentation be by Joan Milliman. Communications have improved greatly, as you will soon see. Uh, the first slide here is showing a picture from the e-blast, which you receive every Friday. The e-blast uh, tells us what's up in the village of immediate nature. Uh, in this case, they're talking about a resale policy change concerning water heaters. The village breeze, my goodness, 
it has grown and improved uh, immensely. First of all, it's all color-coded with the village colors. And if you look carefully, you'll see little five, five sections. And if you push on the section on your computer, you go directly to that section. So it's GRF, Third, United, Towers, and the neighborhood events. Now, the last neighborhood events is actually schedules from street sweeping and project logs from each of the mutuals in GRF. And this comes out monthly. This is a, a, one of the very beautiful things that came out from the History Center, but we had uh, something to do with this. Uh, these are the, the tree walk brochures, and there are three special walks, as you can see. But what's also interesting is that there are virtual walks like this on television, and you can find these, I believe it's on YouTube, and you can actually go through the brochure and take the walk virtually. You don't have to go out to the, you know, if you if you can't get out, you can go, you can take the walk and see the trees. Um, one of the things that marketing has done is to take a look at our all of our flyers for recreation events and classes, and they've branded these flyers with our colors, and the colors are orange, yellow, blue, purple, green, gray, and tan, or any combination of that. They don't try to put them all on one, as you can see. But they've also uh, looked at the font styles and so on. So things are looking more the same, more us. Okay, next. On the social media, especially Facebook, we send out immediate information. In this case, this is a picture of the, uh, the holy fire and the smoke from that. And it was a, a, a notice to everybody on Facebook. And you could get all the information you needed from that. And these little blurbs come out whenever there is a emergency or some special thing that we have to notify the village for. Several calendars have been developed. This is a picture of the performing arts calendar. Um, again, it's branded with the logo, as you can see, the little leaf on the top and the colors. And then uh, notice the two column, uh, the two columns are easier to read. You have the event on the, the title on the left and a little bit about it on the right. A series of newsletters was also developed by our communications and marketing department. The security bullet bulletin, um, easy rider for, for the bus group, and then there's also an employee newsletter that comes out regularly. This is new. Uh, this is a new software. It's called Granicus, and it's a governance standard software used by many cities and counties. So we just kind of got on board. But what it does is to uh, give us boilerplates for agendas and meeting minutes and committee reports so that the, uh, the secretaries do not have to rewrite everything every time. They have a uh, something they can follow right away. and. In fact, Granica sometimes takes over to our detriment, and we have to be careful with it, but it's a very handy tool. Okay, next. Now, this is code red, and uh, anytime an emergency in the village occurs, you will receive a robocall by phone, you will receive a text on your cell phone, and you will also receive an email. In addition, uh, code red can target. if effective areas. For example, if uh, clubhouse, if gate one is uh, is going to be closed for some emergency, they can reroute people to other gates and may warn you that you have to take an alternate route. And this just comes out on your phone or your email or your, uh, it, I don't see how anybody can miss it. Just be sure that your email is in for us so that we can notify you and also your phone number where you can be reached. <coughs> Next. Again, a, a sign of our branding. Notice this This is Village Media TV, Village Television, Village Media, and the Media Services 55. They each had very different looking logos at one time, but notice that they're branded with our colors and the logos and the fonts that we use regularly. Now, this part is the technology part. 
since I'm media and technology, oh boy. So we discovered that we wanted a higher speed internet, but in order to get it, we had to improve the infrastructure. So the infrastructure now has been improved, as you can see, vastly. It's three times, internet speeds are three times faster. Uh, the, the capacity's increased tenfold, but the problem is that not everybody's modem could handle that. So Western Digital has come up with uh, free modems, 4,000 of them, for those who didn't have them. And they're in busy installing these modems for us for free. Broadband improvements, right. You're all aware that we have a new satellite dish. Uh, the cable node and vault maintenance, and you see someone there working away. Uh, there's a new channel guide that's going to that is being updated. Uh, Stingray music, I'll mention in the next slide, but the last thing on this list is the TiVo whole home DVR, which is a really biggie. There are 200 people now that have this, and there are 200 on the waiting list for it. Uh, with uh, the whole home DVR, you can record as many as six different programs, six, count them, and you can watch one while five are recorded. You can actually watch one program in one room and another program in the other room. Um, it consists of one, only one DVR, uh, that's your recording device, and several small client boxes which go to your other TVs. So you can actually see everything from every room or not see the same programs or record different things from different rooms. It's quite a miracle. And in addition, uh, they have certain apps like Netflix and Hulu and Pandora and iHeart and HBO Go and so on. So next. Stingray music. No, go back one. I just have to mention it because Stingray, you know, we've had the music channels before. We still have music channels, but now Stingray offers something that wasn't offered before. They have beautiful videos that you can watch while you're listening to the music. And I just, sometimes I just sit and watch the videos. It's really very beautiful. Downstairs, we have a queuing system where resident ser at resident services, and you simply can, it, it saves us time and energy and everybody gets served. You ask your question, you enter your name, um, and, and then you go and sit and wait for your number to be called. It's really quite fast. And last, I think, not, al not almost last. In the library, they've installed some iPads for residents to access the internet. So that's pretty handy. Just, just sit there and access your email or whatever you need, or, or maybe a research question you want to ask. And last but not least is Dwelling Live. This is the online access to gate clearance. When you come to Dwelling Live, you find it through the Laguna Woods Village website. You enter your email name and your password, and your password is simply your ID number. And then you can log in, and then you have a chance to, to uh, register your guest online. And thank you. That's my report. Okay. Thank you, Joan. It's really interesting how... Joan and Eileen and the whole communication team have worked so hard and expanded the, with a variety of tools to reach out to the community to be able to communicate. And this is their never-ending task. They keep looking to see what else can we do to improve communications in our village. I'm going to um, have us do a, a quick detour here and ask um, Betty Parker, our Director of Finance, our CFO to come up and please explain the chart from the November 8th, 2017 minutes that was in question earlier. Good morning. I think it's still morning, right? Um, I have the page in front of me that was discussed earlier. It's page four of four from the November 8th, 2017 corporate members meeting. And I think the questions uh, centered around the numbers that are tabulated here. So when we have a corporate members meeting, we have a, a spreadsheet up on the display for everyone to follow. And it starts with um, a tab that establishes quorum and shows how many votes per, for each director that's in attendance. 
And so the total votes available for that meeting will depend on the quorum that's established and the number of votes per director. For example, in United, um, we take all of the uh, 6,323 potential units or votes and divide it by the number of directors, divided by 11. And then there is a small rounding issue. So United director, uh, one United vote, it equals 574 votes, for example. And so all 11 directors are voting representing that 6,323 units. Same thing goes for third and then mutual 50. So the, um, the first spreadsheet we put up shows the quorum and the total votes available. And then we have a tabulation that is shown as the inspector of election is reading off the ballots. And we start with a tab for United, one for third, and one for mutual 50. And we tabulate those votes. And then the spreadsheet does all the math and it, it results in, in this final tabulation that you see here that the inspector of election signs and certifies. Um, but there's a lot of math behind this. So um, just as an example, in an election like this, um, no one candidate received every vote. So in this particular meeting, we had a potential votes of 12,656 uh, based on the attendance. And um, we had, well, I'm sorry, that's the, the total available. And then based on the attendance, um, you know, and who they're voting for, the spreadsheet tabulates all that. So I'm just going to pick on Annette Sewell as an example. She received all 11 votes from uh, one of the mutuals at 574 votes each. She received 10 votes from another mutual at 554 votes each and then two votes from mutual 50 at 62 votes each. So the spreadsheet tabulates all that. And then what you see here in your minutes is just the final result of the 11,978 votes that she received. So if anybody wants to check um, that file so they better understand how it's calculated, we certainly can do that. The file is given to the inspector of elections and he certifies this um, ta final tabulation page. Thank you, Betty. So where do we go from here? Do we go back to uh, approval of the minutes? I don't know. So um, question from um, the director in question. Thank you. Based on what Betty just said, the maximum total number of votes over here would be 11,000 some odd hundred dollars. I mean, some odd hundred numbers. This shows 44,000, that's why I questioned it. It's way in excess of the total number of units in total. So somebody needs to look at this table. It's per candidate. It's per candidate. That's, yeah, that's reflecting total number of votes times the number of candidates. Right. Yeah. That's why. Correct. So, Betty, do you want to come up to the microphone so people can hear the explanation of that? And then, John, I, I see your hand. We'll, we'll get you. Right. This election is a little different because it wasn't a yes and a no election, right, where there's just one vote for either a yes or no. This is an annual election to fill seats, and there were four open seats. And so each um, voting member was able to vote for four different candidates. And so um, you would have a maximum of 12,756 votes possible for each candidate, each of four candidates for each seat. Does that satisfy the question? Is that a yes? I think it does. Is that a yes? OK, we have one more person who wants to speak on this, John Dallas. OK, I can't really stand. Oh. But just a slight correction in Betty Parker's presentation. There are 62 votes for mutual 50 per director instead of 72 votes as presented on the screen. Oh, okay. There's a slight error. Thank you, John. You're welcome. So now, can we log on? So now we have to could move to. Yeah. I move that we uh, accept item 6A in the. Uh, Agenda package. I second. This has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you. The motion passes. Thank you, Betty. Appreciate that. 
And now we're going to move on to what's next. In the um, number nine, and we're on the, we're still in the slideshow. Oh, we are. Yeah, slideshow. Let's celebrate. That would be Director Perrick. That's you. Yes. <laughs> Let's celebrate. Twenty-seven hole golf course. Um, they did so much um, remodeling, and not only in um, the management, but in the landscape management and the regular management of the golf course. Great achievements. Thank you. Recreation sponsored events. We, we, you can see when you get the globe even, the, you know, all of the events that we have that have really increased. 250 events this year we, that foster community activity as well as inclusion of all people. Continual enhancement of the programs, high quality entertainment, new caterers, we've, we've expanded our list of possible caterers that are approved for the village and vendors and food trucks. We've really infused, that's an interesting word, but we, we've, we've included many children's activities in the family events. Numerous events have been added since 2016. Everybody remembers 4th of July celebration and the fireworks. It was well attended and loved by all. This is one that a, was a popular event. We had one farmer's market, and we're looking toward increasing the number of farmer's markets this year using, using the produce from our own gardeners. Annual Health Expo was well received this year. This will be happening again in 2019 and um, possibly expanded upon. We had for a Memorial Day observance, um, besides the uh, troops from Camp Pendleton, we also had um, the Boys Choir, which was um, a beautiful event. Water Safety Day was well received and a good learning experience for us all. Hoedown, you can just tell the, the expression on this woman's face, how happy people were at the hoedown. I've heard lots of remarks about, that was really a great event, just lots of fun, a fall hoedown. And then, I know you all remember the heat wave of the summer, and to save us, some of us, from air conditioning prices, and, and if our air conditioner didn't happen to be working at the time, we had free movies in uh, the Performing Arts Center, uh, complete with popcorn and fun movies. Here's Indiana Jones. Community art, community center art exhibit. As you walk around the community center, you see these beautiful paintings by our own artists, and they were they've been contributed by the Laguna Woods Art Association. And the truth of the matter is that I'm not sure exactly when the the exhibit changes, but it changes periodically. So we have continually new art on our walls in the community center. Thank you. Arbor Day tree planting was a wonderful event. So kind of as a summary of our GRF accomplishments in 2018, the assessment stayed flat. We maintained reasonable recreation fees. We increased our reserves. We invested in infrastructure, both in the buildings and in our technology. We provided a variety of amenities for all ages and all interests. We collaborated with the three housing mutual boards, United Third and Mutual 50, as well as village management services and staff to work toward the common goal that all of us have of enhancing the quality of life for all residents of Laguna Woods Village. Thank you. So where we are now is we are still, believe it or not, on the vice president's remarks. And where I am on that is this last point that I'd like to make, that through the work of the combined legal teams of United Mutual, Third Mutual, Mutual 50, and GRF, 
we've achieved other items and extension of the trust. Both the trust amendment and the continued work on the 2.1.4 resolution arose from the January 30th, 2018 corporate members meeting at which Council for United stressed the importance and urgency of extending the trust and so preserving Laguna Woods Village. At this same meeting, the challenges in interpreting bylaw 2.1.4 arose and the concept of embodying the village's expectations into a resolution arose. A document that serves to interpret the bylaw as to which projects required a corporate members meeting and a mechanism for encouraging dialogue and productive discussion. While it was anticipated that GRF United and Third would have adopted the bylaw 2.1.4 resolution, the resolution is still under construction. So at this time, I am seeking a motion and a second to have this agenda item postponed until consensus is achieved and the resolution is ready for adoption. May I have a motion? I so move. Thank you, and a second. Thank you. As the person who made a motion, I'd like to speak to it. Yes. Uh, we cannot continue to take so long to get this resolved. Uh, and I would like to um, refer to Jeff Beaumont here uh, to, to speak, if you could. I'm asking you. Yes. OK. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I know uh, Fred and Bob have some words to share as well. And, um, I'll take this opportunity just to share um, Rosemary's thoughts about moving this forward. I think what I've said to the United Board, I'll say to everybody, which is I think something's better than nothing, but to the extent that we could take maybe another month or two and to tighten up some language, address a few more uh, what I think are minor concerns, and put together a document that we can all uh, look to and uh, adopt in a meeting within the next, like I said, 60, maybe 90 days at most, in my opinion, would be the best uh, for all of you in the village. I, again, I'll let Fred and, and Bob speak more to this, and you all know, we've been through this before, that that um, amendment to the trust agreement and the GRF bylaws uh, was a result of resolving a lot of conflict that's behind us, but to know where to go tomorrow we can't forget where we came from, and that was a lot of work that we all joined together to accomplish, and we want to make sure that that isn't undone. And right now, this is like the final, I think, um, mechanism needed to close any gaps with respect to how we left off with tightening up the trust agreement and the GRF bylaws to make sure that um, your um, legacy that you've set to accomplish, um, which is to be a part of a village that everybody shares some role, um, which is different than your two other cohorts um, up north. Um, you have more involvement than your other um, sister communities. And with that comes, I think, an additional layer of responsibility amongst each of the housing mutuals and GRF to make sure that we all stay connected and very close and work together in a way where we can really accomplish the greater good of the village. And, and again, that means we need to just make sure we're aware of risk. Um, and where there's risk, we work hard to, if not eliminate it, reduce it. And I think this resolution really does just that. So I share your thoughts that we should keep this on the burner and keep it moving forward and work closely with Towers, Third, uh, the United Board, and GRF to close this up. And I would just echo Jeff's sentiments a bit. I think the resolution was intended to foster discussion between the entities and to get everyone down in the weeds, so to speak, so that we had some specific, a specific understanding of the triggers as to when we need to call votes. And then um, second to that, also to flesh out a little bit what that process is gonna look like. Because what we're trying to do, and you know, and these are my words, I kind of used these last, last January, is we need to incorporate habits in the organization that involve sharing information to the corporate members and, and 
equally or if not more important, getting feedback from the corporate members so that we have the guidance and, and we're moving forward in a direction where we're all working together. And I think that we've had a, a good deal of positive discussion. We've, we've come far with the 2.1.4. I would agree putting a time frame to it would be a beneficial thing. Um, so, so I think we would embrace that as well. Uh, perhaps the next steps could involve not just having council speak because council have all been welcome and involved in the process, but maybe we think about expanding that a little bit by forming some type of a committee or just maybe a less formal meeting than that where we had some representatives from the respective boards who could sit down and we can we could work on the specifics of how we improve these, this process and bring this to a resolution. As long as we are committed to a time frame, which is, you know, and third, Thirds Council totally, uh, you know, agrees that we have to work on it. But, you know, we're talking, this has been like 11 months have passed. So we know, and thank you, Jeff, for putting words to what our sentiments, but we just know that we have to get it accomplished. So whatever method that we could um, use to achieve that, whether it's, you know, meeting with a committee or whatever, uh, we're ready to achieve what we have to achieve. Thank you. Pat English, 2022D. Yes. Uh, I'm not speaking as a United member because I'm no longer a United member. Uh, and I'm not a GRF member, so I'm just a regular person right now. Anyway, um, I was shocked when I saw item number 11 on this uh, agenda before two new directors have been elected to GRF. This is a really, really important resolution. 2.1.4, 2.1.6 is probably the most important bylaw change that we have ever done. And what does it do for the corporate members? It does a lot for us. It gives us some control over the spending of GRF. And yet, you put number 11 before electing the new directors, which is totally unfair. Don't you think that the new directors should have some say in this matter? They certainly should. Anyway, thank you very much. Just to clarify, <coughs> are you going to do that, Joan? You do it, uh, GRF. Uh, GRF does not vote with the corporate members. The corporate members are the housing mutuals. No. Okay, I, I, I was wondering if you would entertain, not for me, but maybe we need an amendment stating more exact time of completion at, at council's suggestion, either make it a whatever, 30, 90 days, something. Uh, I can't make the amendment, but you need to perhaps uh, flesh out the motion. The motion was on to approve just to start discussion. So now we can all vote to, uh, and Joan is the expert here, but we could uh, change it to, um, to postpone this until, and give a 90-day date. But do we have to add an amendment that says the 90 days? I don't know. Don't look Joan, at me, I have Joan, a bunch of lawyers over there. Joan, Joan knows. <laughs> do we have to add the amendment, Joan, that says the 90 days? Yeah, your, your motion is just to approve the discussion, correct? Oh, right, basically. And, it, and it's yeah. too open-ended, so you need to amend it. <coughs> oh, to close it up. And then approve the amendment. Okay. And approve, if it passes, then approve the amended motion, which and postpones it to X time at the at council's suggestion. And okay. if they have a suggestion as to how long. 90 days. You know, whatever. 90, 90, yeah. 90 days yeah. might They're, be appropriate. If I hear 90 days over okay, to so, my right. Okay, so, all right. So one of you has to... I move to amend. <laughs> I okay. want. I want to do it really fast. So I don't Marie. forget. Go. I move to amend <laughs> this motion to uh, uh, the, postpone for ninety days. 
Right. Uh, do I have a second? I second. Second. You have to okay. vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amended motion, which motion. is to postpone to the vote. No, to, 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 well, Jeff is questioning. Just to amend. You're approving the amendment. Right. Yeah, we're approving. Oh, but the, I said 90 days. 90 days for what? Exactly. I was going to suggest for 90 days. Um, to bring it back to the corporate members okay. for a vote. So I'm going to clarify the amendment that said I 90 days to bring it back to the corporate members. Right. Okay. Within right. 90 days. Right. All so, right. So, so, got that? so that's the clarified that, amendment to Should, the motion, and it was seconded by Director Skillman. All those in favor. Well, do you want Are, Cheryl to read it just in case I might have, or we're okay? okay. We're okay. All right. She's smiling. I know it's okay. They're just oh. approving the amendment. The yeah. Amendment. Okay. So we will now have, um, I have um, Dick Rader wishes to speak. If you vote that this will go back for uh, revisions possibly, where will that occur? Will it occur in a committee meeting open to the public? This has not been decided. I heard several things from the legal team over here, like um, like representatives from all of the boards meeting together with legal. Yeah. Jeff, you, you initiated that discussion. Fred, I don't know which one of you wants to address this. The reason why I was asking is because if it's going to be an open meeting to all people, I will make my suggestions at that time. However, it's going to be uh, sort of the lawyers coming up with something. I'd like to point out two things I think are extremely important to be reviewed. Should I mention what those two things are? You've still got a couple minutes. Oh, okay. So on page uh, two of five at the bottom, it says, that it's resolved that the following types of business and activities shall require the approval of the corporate members. So now that we know that, let's refer to the next page, three of five, item three. Construction of an addition to an existing building or recreation facility involves over 500,000 or more, or that expands the total square footage of the building. These are all having to do with external extensions of a building. I'm suggesting that item three should read construction of an addition no. or alterations to an existing building. That would cover internal alterations as well. And the reason for that is you can imagine a situation, for example, in Clubhouse no. 2, no. suppose... Dick, we, you know what? We're get, you're getting into the details that this committee is going to be working on. So I'm going to ask you to not get into that. Okay, now. okay. But will I have an opportunity to present these things? Because there's another one that's even more important. You will have this. This I can guarantee you. And I do not know the the composition yet. But you'll have members of your board, VMS board, will be there, and you can bring it to them, and you can bring it to the no, third board, because you're... No, United. Oh, it's the United? I thought you were third. Okay, to, to the United board representatives. Okay. They will be representing you. Okay, thank you. Yes, and my next person is, um, I have these handy blue cards that have been given to me. Maxine McIntosh is next. Thank you. On a, on a little different tack, I've had a number of people in the community say they don't quite understand the corporate members meeting and so forth. And since you're televised, I just want to clarify that uh, Beth, Beth Parak said correctly that GRF members cannot vote on something that comes before the corporate members for a vote. However, the GRF members can do everything else. They can debate, they can put forth resolutions, they can make suggestions. They can participate in the meeting completely, just short of the vote. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, another thing, the reason the configuration here is so different is as it's a corporate members meeting, and corporate members are all our major boards here, uh, board members, except GRF, uh, the presidents sit up here. This is not like a, a usual meeting. And then my one request is, since you're postponing this probably for 90 days, uh, could you please have one open meeting? There's been no opportunity to hear 
how different board members feel about these issues. Maybe you could have one meeting without the attorneys and just the corporate members there so that people in the community could come and hear how different people on the boards are feeling, not just the constant legal input. Um, uh, all your meetings up to this date have been closed. There have been all opportunity for uh, people from outside the community to come in in the formation, in the formation of what is being presented here for this bylaw change. Mm -hmm. So I would hope you would offer at least one open meeting for the community. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask a question of our legal team here. So to put together, I know that we're going to continue to have questions on what it will look like. So would the legal team meet with the presidents of the boards and come up with what the design will look like to, me to meet? How will that, how will that go? So I think, I think my plan on it would be to solicit input from the various presidents as to how they would like this to be constituted, mm -hmm. and then I would put it before the GRF board in uh, December, and I would hope that the other mutuals did the same to figure out how the meeting is going to take place, and then we would try and schedule it. I imagine it's going to take more than one meeting to have the discussions, mm -hmm. so I'm going to try and encourage, if we can, to start those meetings in December so that we have some time and, and we're ripe for the corporate meetings within the 90 days. We also would anticipate sending out what the draft resolution was with the notice of that special meeting, which means really we're kind of compressing ourselves to a 60 day time frame, and I just would want to be sensitive to that. It kind of concerns me if we wait and go, wait to go back to the full board on each of that, we've now taken another month up trying to get that done. So I'm wondering um, if, well, Jeff, what do you think? What's your I, idea? I, I agree with Fred. It's going to be tight, but I also think we should not forget we've already put a lot of work into this. Yeah. And uh, this draft, although it's not um, close to being final for our purposes, it, I don't think we're that far off. Um, and I think that at least what I will and already have discussed with United is um, we need to get any final input, and we've gotten quite a bit of input from United board members, but if there are any other comments about this, we need to collect those, um, have them discussed and considered um, by me and Fred and um, Sandra for third and Steve Roseman for the towers, and we need to then decide on how to effectuate the changes and to get them before the, each board for final consideration and then put before the corporate members. I, I, I honestly don't think we have a lot of work ahead of us. It's just fine tuning. I, I honestly think that just fine tuning is a hand changing an and to an and or, uh, maybe expanding on the definition of a building, meaning exterior, interior. There's just a few things in here that we just need to tighten up. And if we overthink this, I think we're going to run up against that 90-day window and find ourselves yeah. ill-prepared. Yeah, sliding down a slippery slope. Yeah. So, um, so we just have to so we, we just have to sit down. The, the presidents with the legal team come up with what that design will look like and go with it. And knowing that it will be representative of every board. Because if we should, the boards, the presidents or vice presidents, whoever is going to be on the committee or the legal team, should get the comments from their own board members so everybody right. is included. Right. And, or, and then proceed from there. Right. Okay, so I'm nodding heads on this idea of what the composition would be like. So now we can move on with the member comments before we move on in the, with the meeting. And... Um, Carl, I don't have a blue card on you. There wasn't any blue cards before. Oh. The other two people didn't have blue cards. I didn't realize there was a blue card. Oh, yeah, they, they've had blue cards. Uh, Maggie has one, but you go ahead, Carl, and then Maggie will be next. Okay. And if anyone else wants to speak, we have this new procedure that you go um, to corporate secretary. Cheryl will give you a blue card when you request it, please. Okay. Go ahead, Carl. Uh, Carl Randazzo. I'm a director on the United Board. The, uh, <clears throat> I've made some comments to Jeff and Juanita regarding this particular issue. Uh, we received these pink ballots 
with the final draft in the mail to us. And at that particular point in time, it gives us not the opportunity to respond other than to so vote yes or no. And the only thing that I request is we go through this whole process with having these little committee meetings or what have you, but the rank and file, the people on the boards do not get a final draft to actually determine what it is that they, you know. Everybody had comments, no you know, put all these comments into this that. thing and then finally come up with a final draft. But maybe certain people do not like what the final draft looks like. And that's been my, the way I've seen business done in the engineering field for years, okay, with specs and what have you, okay. So I'm wondering if we could come up with a process whereby everybody, the whole, everybody in the boards that's going to vote on it gets the final draft before you ask us to vote on it so that we can, you We're know, digest it, if you will. That's all okay. I'm saying. Okay. That's, we, we're not at the final draft yet. No, no I understand that. that. I'm saying it's part of the planning that we plan in the fact that we formulate a final draft, disseminate that to all of the board members for so their can read it digestion, and then yeah, ask that's for a, a vote. I mean, is that's all that. standard uh, operating may, procedure. May, may I? Go ahead, Jeff. It's not my decision, but my suggested approach to the framework would be to um, have a deadline for all the corporate members to get their input into their respective presidents. And then from there, we would hold a meeting with the attorneys and the presidents, vice presidents to go through those changes line by line. And then from there, the attorneys will be tasked to prepare a draft. And then from there, that draft will go to the, all the corporate members for the review. And then there'd be a deadline for them to comment on that draft. And then there would be f any final changes amongst the president, vice president, legal team. And then from there, if the changes are relatively minor, which I anticipate they would be, then that would be the draft to go out to the corporate members for a vote. And that sounds like a really logical plan. I see heads nodding up here. And I'm sure that Jeff would um, reiterate that. So one of our folks here taking notes would be able to um, but would be able to have that process in place. Thank you, Carl, for your suggestion. And now we are moving on to Maggie Blackwell. Thank you. I am the second corporate member to comment. I think we have seen familiar faces here today. And because they are so familiar, we forget that they are not sitting directors who are the ones who should be conversing about this. So we have heard that. Um, so that's something to remember next time. The Maybe if the board directors all wear a badge or something, that will be easier for us to control because throughout the meeting we have had non-corporate members speak first, in fact. Uh, the second thing is this does not bode well. There will never be perfection in this amendment. You have to say that we will produce an amendment which we think is the most agreeable amendment that we can by the process which we are now agreeing on. And we will never meet everyone's qualifications, but we will vote on it. It will always have, there will be two or three or five people who will be quite distressed that their feature will not be in it. That's all right. That's the way it goes. That's why we vote. So let us, let us meet our requirements and follow our procedures and go with the suggested motion and then let us at the right time, vote. And then let's put our weapons back in our pockets and join our elbows together and get to work. Thank you. Here, here. Thanks, Maggie. Um, so, we have to vote so now we've, we've and we've got one more person that gave me a blue card. We have one more card. Yeah. Uh, Dick Rader. I think you have an excellent road plan, but I would like to make one other suggestion. 
Carl brought it up. He said, well, the board members have to be advised and be aware of what they're going to be voting on. And I would request respectfully that the boards, the individual boards, somehow make the members aware during one of their meetings so that they can invite comments from their members. Because you said the boards are going to be representing the members and we'll have input. We can't have input if we don't know what it is. So do you understand what I'm saying? Well, I'm guessing that what will happen is when um, boards are reporting to the board, when there's a report to the board, it will be during an open meeting time, so therefore that will be, be taken excellent. care of. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. We've done the blue cards. So now we are going to vote on the amendment to the motion, which is to um, put, um, Cheryl, would you read it to us, please, so we can be really accurate? Okay. All right, there was a motion on the table. Oops, sorry. Oh, the amendment to the motion. There was an amendment to postpone the voting of bylaws 2.1.4 and then amended for 90, to postpone the vote for 90 days. Okay, so first we vote. To, to add to the 90 days, at which time it must be brought back before the corporate members for a vote. Yes. Yeah, that clarifies it more good. Okay. All right. So, amended motion to bring it back 90 days and bring it back to the corporate members for a vote with a 90 day time limit. All those in favor of the amended motion? Thank you. Those in disagreement? The motion passes, the amended motion passes. Now we're going to vote on the motion. And the motion was to approve postponing 2.1.4. All those in favor of postponing? Thank you, all those opposed? Motion passes. Now where we are is I am going to move this meeting over to council, um, to GRF and United to discuss the uh, resolution about the United States Postal, yes, postal Service. I'm sorry, did you want to do number 10? No. No, we, we move down to here and then we'll do 10 after that. Well. I, I think that 10 is important because that would have covered Pat's deal. So we can do that. Because then she wouldn't have had a problem with that if she wasn't. You want to start with nine? My um, consultant on my left is helping me with this. We are now going to move to number eight. It's number eight. Yeah. Eight is really where it's. Eight. We did, we introduced Catherine. Nine is a thing. Oh, number nine. And that, that I do, then you do, Rosemary. Okay, we are on. We've acknowledged Catherine as the inspector of elections. Now we're on number nine, acknowledgement of directors whose terms have expired. And those three are Beth Perrick, Tom Circle, and Judith Troutman. And I, th I thank Tom and Judith for their contributions and their, all that they've given to our community and we're so grateful and we wish them best wishes in the future. We are now on number 10 and I would like to have Director De La Rosa. What? No, oh my God, it's, uh, my friend Rosemarie will take care of this one. <laughs> oh my God. She, all of a sudden, she forgot I my forgot last name. name. I forgot. What, what is all my right. name? Even? DeRosa. That's a new one. Okay. Yeah. In any case, I've just been asked to do this. Um, on the initial agenda, when, you know, way back, it said introduction of new board members. And now on this agenda, it's changed to number 10 now says, I mean, it said introduction. The past agenda said introduction <laughs> of candidates. Thank you. And now this agenda says introduction of new board members. And as you all know, for this board, we d for this situation, which is different than the housing mutuals, 
we, because we had the same number of candidates as there were positions open, we did not have to have an election. And per the GRF bylaws and the corporate code, the slate of candidates, three for three, was declared elected at the GRF board in open session on November 6th. So therefore, the candidates are the new board members. So at this point, we should welcome the three new board members filling the three vacancies. So should I mention, should I read yes. your names yes. too? I yes. mean, I'm getting like, I'm not getting paid for this. <laughs> uh, oh, I never do. That's uh, Beth Parak, Pat English, yay for Pat, because <laughs> she wanted to be on this and it's good. And Don Tibbetts, and yay for Don also. And now we have, well, Beth is already on. <laughs> and the, the important thing is we now are represented on GRF with members from United. So yay for that. Yeah, so uh, congratulations to all of you for being the new board members for GRF. I'm done. Do we have to vote on it or anything? Thank no, you. it's done. All right. Okay, Thank done. you. All right, my director, Dilla Rosa. So, yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> anyway, um, so now we are moving on to, to, to uh, United States Postal Service and to our legal team to take it. All right, so just to uh, introduce this, because I know we had put it out in advance to share, and we're actually grateful for comments that we get back from folks um, who share those in. Um, j just by way of history, the, the post office approached us because they have um, time left on the lease. For clarification, it's another year. I think the lease should continue in and through September of next year. So there's not necessarily an urgency to it. Um, but I, I did not want to waste an opportunity to come before the corporate members. We get you this time once per year, and then we're trying to instill something in July of each year. Uh, we have pushed with the post office aggressively a couple of times. Um, we are in conversations with their legal counsel, and to you know, to put it uh, bluntly, they have been resistant to even the most innocuous of change to that lease agreement, the tone that they have been presenting to us is that they really don't have a significant interest in maintaining that post office, although, and I would agree with this sentiment, I think that is a very generous lease arrangement for them. Um, they pay a dollar a year under the lease, um, and we end up bearing a lot of the expense associated with utilities and such. Um, so they get, in essence, a free location. What we get out of it is what I think has been perceived as a very beneficial um, improvement for uh, the neighborhood. So we've been we've been willing to work with them. Uh, we did probably the the most significant term that has been raised is this bit about the sublease, um, the right of the post office to sublease um, the facility, which we did raise with their legal counsel and. Uh, he explained that the basis for that is that the post office, this is a form lease for them, and the post office often leases a facility that is much larger than what they need in order to serve the members' needs. We have already pointed out in response to that that this is a rather small facility that really doesn't lend itself um, to any additional space. Um, it's been shared uh, that, you know, council will take that change back to his client if we want him to. Um, again, the tone of it is that council's not recommending the change um, by the client, but he'll bring anything that we ask him to make by way of change. And so that really brings us to today. Um, and, and to state it bluntly, if I haven't stated it enough either, while GRF is the one who signs this lease, this, this most definitely is, is the poster child for what 2.1.4 says rests with these corporate members to approve. So it's really up to you guys whether the lease would be approved or not approved or approved as amended down the road. And so we have one of two choices for you. You know, one is uh, similar to the 2.1.4, you could postpone your vote on the approval of that lease until a time certain and give us marching orders to go back and tell the post office that we're not going to approve it on these terms. You know, or we could move forward with the vote. You guys, 
I don't know how you might vote, but let's say you voted down the lease, then what would be communicated back through council to the post office is that the corporate members who have the authority have voted down their form lease to see if that might prompt change uh, from the post office position. I just, you know, I hasten to add here, and this might be posturing, but the tone that's being presented to us is that this is something that the post office is not really eager to extend and that they're, they're trying to do that more as a favor for us than it is for something that they want as a uh, facility. So, I mean, that being said, I would return to our chair who is gone because I think it's an appropriate time for m member comment. Can I make comment? I think if you want to please take the podium and... My recommendation on this would be to approve it, but to cross out, you know, with the exception of the sublease, oh. but just cross it out and initial it. Uh, I work in government, and I was subcontract administrator for seven years, okay? And, um, and basically just cross it out, initial it, send a cover letter that we accept the lease, you know, based upon the exception and then let them come to us if they don't agree to it, rather than going back and trying to negotiate and listening to them saying, oh, no, we don't want to do it. It's a simple thing, and I can't see any reason why they would not agree to it. So that's my suggestion. Okay. And, yeah, and for clarity, I think that a corporate member could make the motion to approve it as amended. The one thing I'd add, which is probably the second largest um, press that we have, is the there was, uh, it's been strongly suggested that we should also require them to name um, VMS as an additional insured under the contract. I don't know if they would accept that. I don't know that their insurance structure is similar to what an outside entity would, but that's probably the second largest of the, the comments that I'm hearing from there. Back to you. Carl. I do have a blue card. Yes, I have I, your blue card. Oh, okay. Right here. <laughs> Just want to make sure everybody knows I did it the right way now. <clears throat> I have uh, I've read this lease. I've provided some comments to Mr. Hartley and others regarding this lease. Uh, my main objection is per this sublease agreement, and I've made that known copious notes. Uh, that I've given to them. Uh, the, I have counseled United to vote no on this if that sublease agreement remains intact in that lease agreement because I feel that that is uh, something that we're giving up our rights to. They're putting a gun to our head. This, uh, I have to say, if the USPS pushes to require that sublease clause remain in the lease, I would find that very suspicious and perhaps I might think that they have some nefarious plan. The USPS has run that Laguna Woods Village location since 2004 without the need for a subleasing agreement. Please note that the subleasing agreement that's currently in effect, those lines are crossed out and that's been deleted. The, uh, so if they feel they need one now, I, I don't know what the story is. In our community, we cannot allow anything other than a post office at that location, so the need for a subleasing agreement is not warranted. The USPS pays only $1 per year in rent, and according to the lease, they can vacate the place whenever they want, so they have no liability with regard to that issue. Even if they would need to vacate the place, <clears throat> they only have to pay they would maybe only have to pay five years' rent, which adds up to $5. We have offered the USPS the same terms as were provided for in the 2004 lease without any changes in rent. These terms should be acceptable to the USPS. Therefore, please have the USPS delete the slub leasing clause. If it is not reviewed, then I will counsel my fellow board members, which I already did, and I'm counseling them here again today, the other board members, to say no. Along with the comments made already, I feel that I read the, le the way I read the lease, the USPS could sublease that location to anyone, ask subleasee for a rental rate that far exceeds the $1 per year, 
and thus make a substantial profit on this lease. This is a, in view of the fact that they, <clears throat> they want to privatize the USPS. The rest of my comments speak for themselves, and those are my thoughts on the matter. But I will be voting no if it contains that sublease agreement. Thank you, Carl. Our next speaker in order is Dick Rader. If we uh, do take the tack that was just suggested, was the likelihood that the post office, which is in financial distress, will say, we're just leaving, and that's what you have to weigh. The other thing I would say is, what is the likelihood that the post office is going to go into business renting space? I mean, you gave a, a specific example. They rent a larger space and then sublease it. That's not what's happening here. So the question is, what, is, what will they do with that if we leave the sublease in? And the last question I have, has that sublease uh, agreement been in effect to, with the prior lease? No, okay. So that was something they just inserted. Okay. Well, it's, it, it remains. Do, how much do we want to have the post office? Because I, I can almost think that if I were in the post office position and say it's going to cost me, I don't care what the rent is, it's labor that costs a lot. We'll just close it. So that's what's in balance. Thank you. Our next speaker is Maggie Blackwell. Thank you. Um, I'm looking at the sublease and I'm looking at what the facility looks like now. If we provide exactly what we provide to USPS, they're not going to be able to sublease this to any mother's pies or any anything, anything. <laughs> I mean, we are supplying the minimal electricity and plumbing facilities. This is a joke. They, they could have almost nothing in there. The, um, the value of the post office to the village, I think, outweighs the risk that they will be able to sublease to someone who only needs what is one phone line and a little bit of electricity and a little bit of water and so on. So I, I think the danger of us having a big restaurant or something move in or, or something else is very slight because of the facilities we are only required to give. And the benefit to our members, I think, is much higher. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Our next speaker is Cash. Good morning. Um, I'm sorry about the earlier thing that I came up here. I was kind of excited to talk about it. I think GRF, being the trustors, should have the first and major alliance to the three mutuals. And through that, they, it's their duty to not have clauses such as number six of the sublease sub and number seven, the alterations. What if post office decides to have a gun shop in that place. <laughs> we have no choice. We'll have to agree that they should do, we, we're going to give them a rope, complete rope. So I would like to change these wordings to take out number six and number seven of the lease. If not, I advise all the members here not to vote for this and uh, refrain from having the post office. I understand it is a little disadvantage to our people, but if we put the pressure, I think they will change. But we have to have our alliance to us first. Thank you. Thank you. Last blue card that I have here is Manny. Sorry, Manuel. Manual. Manual. Thank you. Um, in addition to the subletting clause that was, everybody's very concerned about, I, I want to make the comment. Uh, 
I realize that a lot of our members see this as a very convenient arrangement to have a post office right there on our premises. However, regardless of that, and I know if we didn't renew the lease, there'd be a lot of members that would be very upset. However, this lease, the way it's written, has a lot of onerous conditions that I would never recommend the directors approve. And I've got some other ones besides the subletting. That was the big one. Um, the next one was the liability insurance, where uh, they should provide proof that they've got a million dollars worth of liability coverage and we should be additional insured named in that policy. In addition to that, if you will look at page 5 of 14, uh, where it's got the clause in there that the premises uh, and, and the improvements there belong to the post office, uh, it provides that they have 90 days to uh, remove that. However, in a paragraph, the second paragraph following that, it states that all the improvements belong to uh, the post office and they're the only ones that can remove it. So even if we wanted to remove it, we'd have to get permission from them to be able to do it if they chose not to remove those premises. So that should all be rewritten. Where they've got so many days, and it's their responsibility to remove it. By the way, there's a typo there under eight, maintenance. In the last line there should be the premises in proper condition rather than is. Okay. Uh, the next section that I'm concerned about is on page 9 of 14. Uh, and there uh, it has uh, alterations. They can make any alterations they choose to those premises. And in a standard commercial lease, you would always have that subject to approval by the landlord. So that's something else I would insist on. Uh, back on page uh, 10 of 14, it's got a representation that we have to make uh, to them. I don't know if there's any problem here or not, but it has to do with any toxic conditions. So I would hope we have something in our file that supports that, yes, that's not a problem. Uh, we cover the sublease. So I, I believe the these other items that I've raised are just as important as the subletting, just as important as the liability insurance and so on. So thank you very much. And my recommendation right now is let's go back to the post office and tell them we're not willing to approve this lease in its present condition and these are the changes we want. And then table it for now until we do that. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Director Moldau. I think it all comes down to one vote initially. Do we or are we willing to lose that post office? That's the first question that we have to ask ourselves. If we say no, we are not willing to lose the post office. Okay, Bunny made it very clear. This is a government that we're dealing with. They don't sway, they don't bend. Uh, we can talk all we want about modifications to the lease. Uh, we're playing with ourselves, okay? So I would say that if I had a vote, uh, I would say that I would want to just make one change if I could not eliminate the clause totally. And that was that we have the right to reject the sublease or because we don't know who they would be giving this lease over to. Suppose I wanted to have a uh, sell pot out of that facility. Yeah. How, how would you like that? Okay, it, it, it's too loose. So that's one constraint that I would place on it. But initially I'd say strike it and see what happens. Do we have a motion? We do not have a motion. Okay, We're, yes, <clears throat> Director Skillman. <clears throat> I agree with Bunny. The, so is that going to be your motion? The sublease, uh, the uh, lease that we have now has the sublease in it, but has been crossed out. And so what they signed five years ago, 2004, had that in it, but it was crossed out. And I suggest that's what we need to do. 
cross it out and send it back to them so that they see our will <clears throat> for the village is not to accept that clause. Uh, if we just say no, we may be beating our heads against a stone wall. Uh, yes, <clears throat> the sublease is worrisome as to what they would put in there, but we have to remember they're still within our gates, so whatever entity they put in there would not be accessible by anybody outside the village. Now, uh, to take uh, uh, Director Moldau's point, that doesn't mean that they couldn't put in something that would be used by the village that we would not be tolerant of. The other a point that was made was that it's considered a great benefit to our residents. And we always like to consider our residents. But there are measures that we could take within the village to compensate in some way for that. Uh, we could make sure that our village bus system had a stop at the post office on a regular basis. I think we would get not just uh, uh, people who ride the bus all the time, but even other villagers that don't always ride the bus if they don't have to try for parking in that tiny little uh, post office on Valencia. So a bus might be very convenient to all of those. I think there are different ways. If we say no, and they we cross that out and send it back to them, and they do not agree with it, they will not give us that uh, co same contract that we have right now, that uh, we have to say no. Uh, I do... We do have to remember and realize that if anything happens to this contract, we have to seriously address the mailboxes in the community. I don't know the mailbox situation in, Thir in United. I certainly know it in Third. And we still have a lot of people in their units putting their mail in little open receptacles. So if we, this were ever to go, we'd better be out there <coughs> making sure that we have safe places for people to deposit their mail, either more mailboxes, you know, so the post office would be used for packages and stuff, but for mail, we would have to really, you know, step it up. That would just be a side operations thing for you, Siobhan. <laughs> Thank you very much, Beth. So, so do we have a motion for this? Do we? No, we don't. Oh, yeah. I'm looking so for one. I move that we cross out the areas in the existing lease that we do not, uh, are not in favor of and, send, and sign it and send it back. And if they will not accept those and sign it to us, then we let them know it's gone. We're not going to uh, sign it at all. And then we start looking, because we have until September on our present lease, we start looking at ways that we want to uh, compensate within our village if we lose that uh, postal facility. Do I have a second? So in summary, the motion is is that we sign it with with yes. corrections, cross outs. Just paragraph six, or can I get some details on what to cross out? Just paragraph six. So was that the motion? That's the Just paragraph six. So then I would I would second that motion that we cross out. Thank you, Bunny. Paragraph, paragraph six, and so that's, I second it. Okay. Is there Motion? anything else in the existing lease that's crossed out? There were things we crossed out that they've rejected. We probably asked for some changes, and they're not accepting it. So we'll go for the big one. So we'll just okay. We have a motion on the floor. All those in favor. We've, we've just been discussing. Um, they had discussion before the motion was made. So yeah. Do you want to continue discussion? I was, I was, um, if there's anyone else that would like to discuss before we do the total vote, final vote. Did they fill out a card? Did you yeah. fill out oh, a card? We have this new system. It's not new. <laughs> I know it's not new. <laughs> it's been in place for <coughs> maybe a year now, six months, a year. Fill out a blue card if you wish to speak. 
Yeah, no, this is the speaking thing. This is the come to the podium. Oh, yeah. Discussion of the motion. Yeah, this is a discussion of the motion, so not the yellow thing. This, uh, Andre Tomar, uh, United uh, Corporate yeah. Member. Uh, my question is, uh, is not dispute, you know, whatever we've discussed so far. My question is about the whether what uh, 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 Juanita, uh, President Juanita proposed, is that an amendment to the original mo motion or that is that a new motion? motion? That was the original motion. Unfortunately, I was out of the room and didn't get a motion going on it. it came so back we don't, and we we don't have discussing. original motion. So we've had our discussion. There's no original motion of this. The original uh, motion is the motion that Juanita made, yes. Because there was not <coughs> one and, and we were discussing. We discussed okay. before the motion. Right. OK. OK. All right. I'm, so we have one more person who wishes to speak, Carl. So based on what's written in the agenda, it seems to indicate that we're voting on the USPS lease. But now there's a, been a stipulation that states that the uh, clause number six or 17 or whatever it is be deleted. So should, because right now we're voting on the lease, and if we say yes, then the lease as it currently is written is what we're, li ri w w is what we're <coughs> voting on. We should be voting on the lease with the deletion of clause number whatever, the six. 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 Okay. That's, what and that, that's what we said. That's, that was the motion. But it's not in, it's not in. Well, that's the motion on the floor. That's the motion on the floor. Right. So, so what okay. he's basically Just saying is trying to clear the air. Ballots. So what he's saying is what do you do with the ballots, which I do not have one, so I don't okay. know. And, and then I just would like to say one other thing, that in the 2004 lease, it was crossed out, but there was a clause put in the bottom of the lease that states that this particular clause has been deleted. It wasn't only crossed out, there was a clause in the lease, the last clause in that lease that says this so, item 13 so or whatever it was in that yes, lease that means they deleted. agree with the motion. It was two things they say no, with regard they to that. It wasn't motion, just the right? process. I think you're doing a roll call vote not using this ballot because this ballot reflects the old version of the lease. Uh, so if you're comfortable doing the roll call vote, that's how I would do it. So just, we so just raise, you mean just raising hands? Yes. We'll okay. And, and Jeff, what do you say? Yes, roll call vote. do it as a roll call vote and not use the ballots because the ballots reflect the old version of the contract. I agree. May, okay, may, may, I, may I make a comment? Um, sure. Uh, it, I'd just like to make one final comment before the uh, roll call vote. Uh, I just want everybody to be sure and understand that if the post office receives this draft with paragraph six stricken and they reject it, then there's no extension of the lease, and the post office will have to if close and vacate. Okay. The, the only other option I see possibly is if that happens, I guess you could come back to the corporate members and ask if you want to start renegotiating and consider a lease with paragraph six um, going forward. And, and I, I believe that was to Bert's comment or somebody mention this option. But right now, as it stands, if the post office rejects this change, um, then there will not be an extension. Right. OK. Right. And that, and that, for clarity, that's been their tone. OK. OK. And so we need an explanation of what a roll call vote is, because we will be not using the papers that you have, the yellow and uh, pink papers because that refers to what's written in the agenda, and we now have a different motion on the floor. So a roll call vote would be? So a roll call vote would be a show of hands, which would reflect who's voting in favor of, so we could count those up for the numbers. Then we would have show of hands of who was against, and we'd have a show of hands. And we, it would record the names with a roll call vote. Of, of those in favor or those against? In all three. In so, favor, against, and, and an abstention. So, so, got that, Cheryl? The alternative is we could go get additional ballots and bring them no, down. I but I think the roll call is the fastest means right. of getting and our. As long as she's, a, she's okay. And Catherine can, would assist yeah, her on that. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, did everyone hear that explanation of the roll call vote? So now, shall I, shall I have people stand, Cheryl? Would that be easier? If, do it by mutuals, right. she's asking. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, we can do it by mutuals. Shall I have them stand? Is that easier for you? Siobhan's nodding her head yes. So we will start with um, United. So United Mutual is voting um, on this amended motion to strike paragraph it's six. It's not a motion. It's a motion of striking. Right. It's just not amended. You're right. So they have to stand. So stand, please. If you are in favor of the motion, you're standing. Okay, we count seven people standing. Got the names, okay? All right. All opposed to the motion. Two standing, we have your names, thank you. Um, all those abstaining? No abstentions. Now we will do third mutual and those um, in favor of the motion. That's all of us that are here because the other three are not here. What do we do about the votes that we cast? Just uh, the, the uh, yeah, it would be. Table. Okay, Catherine. All right, thank you. And I know that, that that's all the folks that are here on third, so we will not have any abstentions or opposition, but those opposed or abstaining, please stand. Not here, thank you. Now we have mutual 50. All those in favor of the motion? That's two in favor. We have those. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Thank you. And so the motion. Do they have to wait? Do that weighted thing with this? Do you know Oh, oh the weighted thing? When it's a roll call, yes. they have to wait? So is they, somebody weighing these? They. they yeah, I mean in technicality. Yeah, so they do they do weigh the votes. Yes, yeah, so so they have to weigh. I mean, I'm sure it's passed, but yes, it's passed. The record. So yeah. here we are. We know that the motion and the passed, will reflect these and the record will reflect the weighted, weighted. vote. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So if they got any in the mail, they are. They're out because yeah. that, that yeah. issue was not yeah. voted on. This is the new issue yes. raised on yes. the floor of the meeting. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's okay. And so these are now scratch paper. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Certification of election by the inspector of election. Catherine, what do you say? Well, we never had a, we didn't have a motion to submit so we didn't have ballot. Mm. Correct. We did it differently. And that's it. Mm -hmm. You had six, correct? Oh, seven for United. <laughs> and two against. Seven and two. Except third, that's United. So there should be seven yeses? Yes. Says eight. And two no's. You don't have a no line. Uh. Go to your quorum page and, and make sure you have the quorum information right. Instead of the name, just okay. put a yes so and no. Director's present quorum for United should be 10. 
Well, I take that back because I was counting the absentee ballots at that stage. Mm -hmm. So let me change that real quick. Do, 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 yeah, they, they still have quorum. Those will count for quorum for the meeting. Oh, okay. Okay, so then I had 10 for United, 9 for 3rd, Well, under vote, why don't you put yes and no? Oh, for names. Instead of names, put a yes and then a no, the second line. I'm hearing it said that the minutes will reflect the yes and the no's. And then the, the, the tally of the yeses will be there, so I don't think we need to continue with this at this Wait, point. Or do we? What do you say, Fred and Jeff? Do we continue with them putting the numbers in? Or? It passed. I don't need to tell. Sure. Yes, Jeff. Yes, Jeff. I'm representing Sandra. <laughs> 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 okay, total yes votes, 8,574. So the motion carries or passes. And um, before I adjourn this meeting, I would like to say thank you so much to staff, to legal team, from my comrades up here, and to all of you corporate members and GRF board members. Thank you very much because we all kind of contributed and worked toward this final, final declaration of what, what, which direction we're taking in the village. Thank you so much. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs> 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 you need to do the operational meeting for the GRF.